All right, thanks again for the opportunity. Of course, you heard the other speaker cancelled, so I'm your uh, backup substitute. My name is Nevin Rosasen. I'm with the Alberta Pulse Growers Commission. Here in Alberta, we represent over 6,500 producers growing pulses, which consist of, of course, peas, lentils, chickpeas, faba beans, and as well soybeans. And then some of you may also be dry bean growers here in the province. So I'm the policy and program specialist. What does that mean? Not really sure but I do agronomy, growers, relations, and I work on a lot of the policy issues. So today we have here in front of us a few different plots. And if you guys come in closer, you'll be able to see some of them are looking at different type of inoculants. Inoculants is always a question that we get at Alberta Pulse Growers, whether to do a peat based or a granule or inoculant. So for those of you who haven't grown pulses, I'm sure you know that they're part of the legume family and of course, they have an advantage that they fix atmospheric nitrogen through the symbiotic process between bacteria and the leg legume plant species. So the inoculant, in this case for peas and lentils, is rhizo rhizobium leguminosarum. And of course, you need to inoculate the plant in order to ensure that you have nodulation. And within those nodules, uh, you'll have that nitrogen fixation process. A question we get every year is, should I use peat-based inoculant? or should I use a granular? And here we have some different uh, pea plots and lentil plots that have been inoculated, not only with a peat and a granular, but also with a new polymer coating. And the theory behind the polymer coating is that it'll uh, supply some of that rhizobium, the nutrients that it needs to prolong their life so that they can infect those root hairs and uh, start fixing atmospheric nitrogen. So when you're looking at uh, your plants, and thank you to the, the black uh, Chevy, who's, uh, I stole the shovel out of the back of the truck. I'll put it back afterwards. But if you, if you want to step in, for those of you who haven't seen, we have here a couple pea plants that I've just dug out. And the two we have here is one with a granular inoculant and one with a peat based. And when we're looking at nodules, what we're really trying to do is to make sure that they're healthy. And so when you look at these plants, they actually look fairly healthy on a scale of one to five. I would give these plants probably a four. They uh, look great. I can't see any uh, clear root rot diseases or anything, although Shama might be able got, to find some. I've got some. In my She's field. got some here. <laughs> but you'll see along the bottom of the plants, there's clusters of nodules. So when we're scoring nodule assessments, what we're trying to do is basically give them a score. We have three scoring factors. The first one being whether or not the plant is healthy. And again, we'll give it a score from one to five. These would score about a four. They look pretty good, but they're already seeing a bit of, not too much heat stress, but uh, if you've driven some other areas of the province, you'll know that peas, uh, many of them are standing much taller at this state in their uh, life cycle. Uh, but given the, the shortage of moisture and the, the hot, dry conditions, uh, they're doing fairly well. The second score that we give is based on the number of clusters of nodules. And if there's more than five uh, clusters, so to speak, and I'll hand these out, you can pass them around, and there's lots more to dig up. When you're looking at the clusters, you want to make sure that there's five or more clusters to score a perfect five out of five. And that's our second scoring. And the third scoring is where we're looking at whether or not those nodules are on the main crown, which is the main root of the plant, the lead root, or whether they're along the lateral roots. And we give it a score of either one for mostly crown, two for mostly lateral, or three for both lateral and the crown. But by going through this simple process of scoring your nodules, you get a really good understanding of uh, how well it's doing. Now where we'll see a difference in these two types of inoculant, peat versus granular, is with the peat-based inoculant, you tend to have predominantly nodules along the crown, the main stem of the root. With the granular, just makes sense, it might not be right next to the seed when it's planted, uh, you'll tend to have more lateral nodules. But that's the main difference as to whether or not uh, the plant fixes more nitrogen based on lateral or crown. Uh, we're not really sure what the impact is there, but we know that when you have both on the crown and the lateral roots, that that is optimum. And that's why we would score it a three. So a pretty easy nodule assessment, anyone can do it. The important thing is that you use a shovel and not a trowel to make sure you get nice and deep and pull those roots out. Because of the dry con conditions and the lighter soil uh, characteristics here, the dirt usually falls off nice and easy. In other areas where you have more clay content uh, at home, perhaps on your own land, 
you'll uh, see that using a bucket of water to rinse them will give you a really good uh, visual uh, and allow you to look at these nodules. So in these plots, uh, you're welcome to walk through them throughout the day and have a look. And uh, you can dig up some plants. Don't try pull them because you'll leave all the nodules and roots below. But again, this is just another demonstration looking at those granular versus peat. And we have another one here which is with that uh, coated polymer. So with that, other things that you might be looking for at this stage are uh, the presence of pathogens such as uh, Ascochyta. That would be the most uh, economically impactful disease here in Alberta for uh, field peas. And Ascochyta and Microsporella blight are uh, both uh, one and two of the same. Same pathogen, just a different uh, sexual stage in the life cycle. Uh, given the dry conditions and the lack of humidity right now, I'm not seeing a lot of Ascochyta, but that uh, is different in every field depending on the canopy closure, uh, the humidity, etc. Uh, but we do get a lot of questions about fungicide application and I won't get into it too much, but I uh, would say that if you do have any questions throughout the day on anything related to pulses, please uh, make sure to come up and uh, ask me all of your tough questions and uh, see if you can stump me. And if you do, I'll turn you over to Shama to let you tell you the right answer. So, any quick questions? I know I was only given five or ten minutes. Any questions related to peas? Yes, sir. Would you double inoculate them? Then we'd both. Right. The question is, would you double inoculate? This is a, a question, and it's been coming up a lot more since we have a lot of new soybean growers uh, in Alberta. Yeah. In soybeans, we definitely recommend to double inoculate it, especially if it's the first time ever growing soybeans. With peas and lentils, if you've been a grower in the past, we actually have seen untreated <laughs> or uninoculated checks do just as well as those that have been inoculated because rhizobium can persist in the soil and they become almost a native uh, bacteria that, that is in the soil. For the question of double inoculating in peas, we don't necessarily recommend it. Uh, we don't see a lot of advantages to double inoculation and uh, you know we're, there's still ongoing research to see if there would be a, a net benefit given the cost. Now cost is another thing. Peat uh, inoculants tend to be a lot to, uh, more affordable than the granular based double and so a lot of uh, a lot of producers will opt for peat especially if they don't have that additional tank to run their granular through uh, we've seen success with with both again the granular and the peat based any other questions before i get the hook yes at the back Yeah, we have. The question was, have we looked at uh, rhizobia and whether they're present three or four years afterwards, after seeding peas? And the answer is yes. We almost always find some rhizobium and we'll see with untreated or uninoculated uh, pea plants that we do get some uh, nodulation. The question becomes whether or not it's the right, uh, right bacteria that is, is doing that. And, you know, the best way to, to see is if your nodules aren't red inside, and you don't get that red color when you split them with your fingernail or cut them with a, a, a jackknife, then the leg hemoglobin isn't present. So does everyone know what leg hemoglobin is? I'll give you a hint, it rhymes, it sounds like hemoglobin, which is in your blood, and that's where you get that red color. So the leg hemoglobin is actually plant blood from legumes, and that leg hemoglobin is essential inside the nodules because it regulates the levels of oxygen, right? Uh, nitrogenase is the enzyme that the bacteria use to fix atmospheric nitrogen and they can't do it in the presence of oxygen. So like hemoglobin actually provides the re reverse function of your blood. It regulates the amount of oxygen to make sure that it's low enough that uh, the bacteria can do their job. All right, any more questions? I got to ask a follow up to the double inoculant. Why, why is it so important in soybeans? And when, and and why wouldn't that be the same case for peas and lentils? Right, so in soybeans, many of our, our soils have never seen soybean inoculants, and that's a totally different species. Lentils and peas share the same rhizobium leguminosarum, but in the case of soybeans, it's actually uh, Brady rhizobium japonicae, a completely different species. And so for first time growers, absolutely in uh, soybeans, we recommend it. With peas and lentils, we get such good success with uh, peat-based inoculant and granular as long as they're applied correctly and uh, maintained at that uh, low temperatures in cool spaces, right? If you leave it on, uh, say, the front seat of your uh, tandem truck in 20-degree uh, weather it's seating and it's 30 degrees in the truck, 
that can really limit the viable uh, colony forming units within that inoculant. But uh, so far we've seen great success even with first time growers on virgin land that's never seen uh, peas or lentils. One comment. Yep, that go ahead. Grant, that virgin land is where you'll see granular do, I don't know about better, but be more consistent because it, it has a longer survivability and I think you'd be surprised how much times your peat actually has died on you, but it, um, because it's inoculating out of the soil, you don't know. Right, and that's an excellent point, is the survivability of the inoculum in the, on the seed coat and with the, the pearls or the granular uh, um, inoculants, you will see that the survivability is quite a bit longer. And it all depends how long your seed is sitting there without germinating in the soils. If it's warm and uh, it's moist soils, you will you'll likely see excellent uh, nodulation. However, if it's dry and it's early and cool, uh, the survivability of your, uh, your seed coat peat-based inoculants can, uh, can diminish quite quickly. Any ideas on the survivability when you use a polymer? How long would uh, how long would it be viable if you had it treated in January, let's say? Right. Uh, the question was the when using a polymer with those peat based, uh, does that increase the survivability? And you know that's a, a great question. Whether or not you inoculate them in January, I'm not sure that would be a recommended practice for sure. And I guess that's one of the reasons why these new polymer coatings. There's so much interest in them. They've also shown or at least some of the, the company's claims are that the polymer coating will actually prevent any antagonism as well between the rhizobium and any type of seed treatments, whether they're a, a fungicide or a pesticide seed treatment. So it's an area where we're really interested in seeing uh, some of the results. Okay. Yeah. Time for Shama. These, this is what I was showing. These are the double inoculated peas. Mm -hmm. So we do have some nice big clusters up along the seed and then these are the little options. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. And they're pink. Nice clusters. Join me in thanking Nevin. Thank you.